Greetings, Classical Lights. This is Ian Halubiak here. We're talking with Joyce Young. Is that how you pronounce it? Perfect. Great. And um, we're talking in preparation for another premiere that you're going to have with the New York Philharmonic because this is not your first time with them. Right. I have uh, played a number of Yeah, of course. Yeah, you mean you've played with a number of people. Mm -hmm. BBC Philharmonic, um, plenty of symphony orchestras across the nation, all that stuff. But um, we're going to talk, I guess, mainly about your Spanish Nights concert coming up with the New York Philharmonic. Um, so let's talk about it. Um, are you excited about the pieces that you're going to be playing? Yes, it's, it's a rare opportunity to play, uh, a piece by Defaya. I think when people ask me to play concertos, uh, recently it's been a lot of Russian repertoire, like Tchaikovsky and Rachmaninoff. Yeah, and I've Kukovsky. seen a lot of, uh, videos of you playing Rachmaninoff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It seems to be, I mean, it just sort of found its way to me and I've been doing like all the concertos, um, one, two, three, four, and the Paganini Rhapsody sort of, mm-hmm. uh, taking turns, getting to know them really well. And to play a Defia Nice in the Gardens of Spain, it's, um, it's, it's a rarity. I think uh, I've done it a, a handful of times, but wherever I go, they usually say, this is our first time doing it, yeah. or uh, it's been 20 plus years. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think it's a very, uh, it, it satiates a very specific uh, place in, in concerto repertoire. So I think so too. And you, the conductor is going to be Bromwell Tove. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you've, uh, he's led you before. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, we've played together uh, in New York, in Vail, as well as uh, in Vancouver, where he's the music director. Okay, and you've done festivals out there, yeah? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. What was the festival you did in Vail? It's the uh, Bravo Vail. It's, oh, okay. Uh, they invite really great orchestras, four or five major orchestras, to mm-hmm. uh, Vail in the summer. And New York Phil was one of the... Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, they're in residency there, I think, in the month of July. So mm. that was when we did it in New York, and then we went over there and did it in Colorado. It's fantastic, yeah. yeah. So um, I wanted to ask you, I was I was conjuring up some questions before you came in, and I was I really wanted to know, because you seem like you're well-versed in Rachmaninoff, and how do you think that this stuff kind of compares? I, it has sort of mm. a similar dynamic, where um, from very soft to very loud, you know, and it, it has it moves... Like with a lot of, uh, I know it's very robust. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it does. Uh, it's very extroverted. I think mm-hmm. both repertoire has, like you said, uh, extreme um, going from very secretive and whispering and sensual colors to something that is um, almost borderline. Uh, hysterical. Mm-hmm. It, it never really reaches that point, but it's it's. Uh, has a lot of tempestuous moments yeah. that are that sort of the the personality within suddenly decides to wake up and there is a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde, uh, but it's it's different I think in my opinion from the romantic repertoire because it's uh, the romanticism of uh, Rachmaninoff and Tchaikovsky it it the composer gives a huge role to the the pianist mm-hmm. as like the virtuosic um, solo figure. And I probably play, I think, more than half of um, what the concerto is about. But in Defia, I feel like I'm an extension of the orchestra. Um, it's, uh, if you look at a painting, I feel like the role that I have on a painting would be like adding th- that eyelashes so the yeah. eyes sparkle. But mm-hmm. Very often, I am not the actual, you know, features of the face. It's mm-hmm. like I am that detail that makes it, makes certain parts come to life and yeah. makes it shimmer and really gives it that you don't know what it is, but you know, suddenly the face has personality. You know, that it's very much more subtle than really in your face um, a virtuosity that you cannot ignore. I think this kind yeah. of piece, I have to really. Um, dig deeper to mm-hmm. find meaning in the subtle things. Mm-hmm. So you think these pieces are very, um, you said they were sort of extroverted before, but I feel from what you described, it sounds a little bit introverted. It sounds a little bit more brings something out of you. I think sound wise might be introverted. Mm-hmm. I, I meant, uh, I guess I felt it was extroverted because going from absolute sublime piano mm-hmm. 
to a sudden rush of wanting to um, really scream from the top of your lungs. And I guess an introverted repertoire would suppress that urge. Cool. You know, you yeah, would yeah. never, you would never like suddenly burst out saying something because you feel like it. But I think there's something about Spanish music that, you know, it happens exactly when you feel like it and you get that kind of almost uh, borderline uh, a crazy woman's voice that's, you know, one minute she's sensual and another minute she is like crying about her lover and it's just sort of back and forth, but yeah. um, it, it's, it's all temporary. So I guess if you look at the, the whole um, arc of it, everything, uh, it never becomes real. Yeah. It becomes kind of like things that happen in a secret garden that um, that never come to real life. It's yeah. there's some life in it that is um, uh, very mystical and not yeah. everyday. Yeah, it's why you bring up a garden because one of the pieces is "Nights in the Garden of Spain" yes. from Defy. Yeah, That's yeah. the one I'll be doing. Oh, cool. Yes. Nice. Is that? Um, do you have a personal connection with that piece at all? Or? I think recently the Spanish music has just found its way to me. I do a chamber music uh, program called Tango Song and Dance with a violinist and a guitarist. Yeah, so yeah. that sort of opened my uh, mm -hmm. myself to learning more about um, Spanish music and and I really there was something about it when I first heard this piece that's I, I knew there was myself in it mm -hmm. it's just these things you can't uh, explain I like to listen to the pieces I am about to learn yeah, yeah. Um, some artists like don't listen to anything because they don't want to be influenced yeah. by the recordings but I think I'll take every inspiration and mm -hmm. I, I truly do believe that at the end you will sound like, like yourself and no one else yeah. So when I first heard it um, by this great uh, pianist named Alyssa De La Rocha, okay. I just, I, it, there was ambiance. I think that's the first thing you get with this music. As soon as it starts, it sounds like nothing else. You, it sounds, uh, sounds like someone's breathing Spanish music to you instantly. Yeah, you yeah. go to a different place and you start kind of dreaming it's uh, it's a world that has um, much more jeweled, fantastic colors, and the air starts like you you start smelling perfume. There is in the air, and there is something very magical about this repertoire that instantly brings you to a, a different place. Yeah, I feel um, kind of how I feel about Carmen. Mm, that kind of music, yes. I think, and that's this is very relatable. To yes. that. I mean, they're they're very similar, especially. I think that's how. Spanish music is usually not necessarily choreographed, but it's kind of set up that way. It's supposed to be kind of a narrative. It's supposed to kind of express, like, it almost expresses, like, the human spirit where we go from, you know, our highs to our lows, and we do that kind of frequently. And in, in this kind of music, it really does that, like Rachmaninoff, like all those composers. But, so, your performances start tomorrow, correct? Yes. That's, uh, that's uh, March 30th. March 30th, yes. Yeah, and then correct. you do five nights. Yep, starting um, Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and the final performance is the Tuesday after. Cool, yeah. And uh, there's going to be an open rehearsal tomorrow. Yep. Are you going to show up for it? Or? <laughs> I better show up for that. Because <laughs> I know sometimes soloists don't, don't always show up to the open rehearsals. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. And it's it'll be nice because some of my uh, friends will attend to that, and yeah. I value their feedback, you know, to just tell me what I can do better in the concert and how just different things came off. It, it of might surprise me, so yeah. I value that. Well, that's good. Well, you're excited about everything then, I assume, right? Of course. Great. Well, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully hoping, hopefully, we're going to be able to show up and get there and see it. We, oh, we would love that'd to. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much for talking with us about it. Thanks thank for you so much, everybody. <laughs>